There's light all around us. With the constant evolution of technology and the development of our towns and cities, it seems that we're becoming bombarded with artificial lights at all times of the day compared to generations before us. Are all of these artificial lights causing us to develop macular degeneration and lose vision? A new study published in the journal JAMA Network in January 2024 has been making headlines because it suggests that these artificial lights, which are becoming more common in modern times, may be a risk factor for developing age-related macular degeneration. In this video, I'm going to review the study, its findings, its weaknesses, and at the end of the video, I'm going to go through some tactical tips of things we can do and things we should avoid to decrease our risk of losing vision from macular degeneration. By the way, I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board-certified ophthalmologist, and I make videos to help you see better, look better, and feel better too. So let's take a look at the study, which was led by a team of researchers out of South Korea. Researchers looked at data from the Korean National Health Insurance Service, which is the public health insurance in South Korea that provides coverage for the majority of healthcare service for South Korean residents. They reviewed data from over 126,000 418 participants and found that 4,078 patients were newly diagnosed with wet macular degeneration. So they compared these 4,000 macular degeneration patients with 122,340 control patients who didn't have the diagnosis. Then they took each patient's address and used United States Air Force satellite data to approximate how much outdoor artificial light that each person was exposed to. And so they crunched the numbers to see if patients with newly diagnosed wet macular degeneration had, on average, higher exposure to outdoor artificial light compared to patients who didn't have macular degeneration. And the results were pretty surprising. They split up patients into four groups based on how much outdoor light each patient was exposed to. They found that patients in the top 25%, the top quartile, who were exposed to the most outdoor light had a 2.17 times over a 200% increase in risk of developing macular degeneration compared to patients in the lowest quartile of light exposure. The other interesting finding they reported was that there seemed to be a dose-response relationship between artificial light exposure and macular degeneration. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's kind of a big jump to just take people's addresses, find out how much light their neighborhood gets, then come to the conclusion that, hey, that's the cause of their macular degeneration. It's all of those bright LED lights outside that are causing people to lose their vision. And yes, you're right. There's so many other factors and variables at play here. There's the patient's sex, their age, smoking status, BMI, medical history, ocular history, so many other variables that you need to control for before you can even consider outdoor light as a possible factor that moves the needle of macular degeneration risk. It's possible that maybe city dwellers who have more light exposure might have other lifestyle factors like their diet or their drinking or smoking habits that are really the factors responsible for the increase in macular degeneration risk rather than light exposure. So the researchers used statistical methods to adjust for these other potential confounding variables. In the study, they adjusted for body mass index, smoking status, physical activity status, alcohol consumption, income level, history of hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol, kidney disease, lung disease, cancer, and they even adjusted for nighttime noise and air pollution. So they adjusted for all of these other variables to try to isolate the effect of outdoor light on the risk of developing macular degeneration. And even after adjusting for those other variables, they saw that 2.17 times risk increase of developing macular degeneration in the highest quartile light exposure group compared to the lowest quartile group. So they did their best to control for all these other variables, but still, at the end of the day, there will be variables that they may have missed in their analysis. The other limitation with this study is that they are extrapolating light exposure based on satellite data from where people live. In an ideal world, they would have actually followed each patient around with a light meter to measure exactly how much light exposure each person was getting. Obviously, that would require a lot more time, effort, and cost. So they used the data that was available to them to try to approximate how much light exposure each patient got. One last thing we need to consider is the biological feasibility of this idea. I mean, the results here from this study are suggesting that artificial light may be playing a role in the development of macular degeneration. Now, let's consider if there's even a biological mechanism that can help us explain how this could even be possible. Well, one theory is that blue light and UV light exposure may cause damage to retinal pigment epithelial or RPE cells, which are important support cells in the retina. 
Damage to RPE cells is a hallmark of macular degeneration development. So if light exposure is damaging our RPE cells, then that could increase the risk of our development of macular degeneration. While it's true that laboratory experiments have shown that shining a bunch of blue light onto RPE cells can cause damage to them, these experiments were done in a laboratory setting on rats and cells and petri dishes. The other thing to keep in mind is that the light used in these laboratory studies were way stronger and more focused than the light we're exposed to in everyday life. Other previous studies done on people haven't shown any significant associations between outdoor light exposure and the development of macular degeneration. So with the current evidence out there, I'm not convinced that ambient light exposure is directly causing damage to our retinas and increasing our risk of macular degeneration. One other theory that's been proposed is that these artificial lights may be disrupting our circadian rhythms and melatonin secretion. There have been studies showing that artificial lights can inhibit melatonin secretion, affecting our circadian rhythms and triggering increased levels of inflammation in our bodies. More recent studies are suggesting that there may in fact be a link between dysregulated melatonin production, disrupted circadian rhythms, and the development of macular degeneration. But it's not definitive evidence yet. So there are theories floating around in the scientific community, but currently we don't have a clear mechanism yet on how artificial light may contribute to the development of macular degeneration. So what conclusions can we draw from this study? Are eye doctors going to be recommending that patients use the darkest possible blackout shades or that their patients use eye masks or to keep their phones in a different room overnight to reduce their artificial light exposure? Not quite. At the end of the day, this study is showing us a correlation, a possible relationship between outdoor artificial lights and macular degeneration. It's far from conclusive evidence that all these artificial lights are causing macular degeneration. But I do think this study provides valuable insight because it has identified artificial light as a possible risk factor for macular degeneration, and it'll spur further studies in the future that will have more precision and control that will allow us to better understand if there's in fact a causal relationship between artificial light and retinal disease. Okay, so the jury is still out on artificial lights and macular degeneration risk, but there are some proven lifestyle changes that have been shown to make a significant difference in the risk of developing macular degeneration and losing vision. So let's go through some of the most effective habits now. Before we get into these lifestyle tips, I wanted to tell you about my optimized newsletter. If you want science-backed tips on how to protect your vision and health delivered straight to your inbox, you can sign up for my optimized newsletter at michaelchuamd.com. Let's quickly review what macular degeneration is and why it can be such a debilitating condition for patients. This is a cross-section of the eye. Incoming light first passes through the cornea or the transparent front surface of the eye and the lens, which helps to focus light onto the retina. The retina is a layer of tissue which lines the back of the eye. It takes incoming light signals and sends them along the optic nerve to the visual cortex in the brain, allowing us to see. The macula is the central area of the retina and is responsible for our central vision. Let's get a close-up of the macula so we can see what age-related macular degeneration or AMD looks like. In one form of macular degeneration called dry macular degeneration, yellow deposits of cellular debris accumulate under the macula. These deposits are called drusen. This is a retinal photo of a patient with AMD. Here you can see the yellow drusen scattered throughout the macula. With time, drusen can grow in both number and size, which can lead to problems with your central vision. In wet macular degeneration, abnormal blood vessels grow into the macula. These blood vessels are leaky and can leak fluid and blood into the retina, causing severe distortion of vision. Most people, about 85% of patients, have the dry form of macular degeneration but about 15% can progress to the wet form. Patients with dry macular degeneration may notice blurring of central vision. In patients with wet macular degeneration, the fluid from leaky blood vessels can make straight lines appear wavy, while also causing significant blurring of central vision. And this loss of central vision has a huge effect on quality of life. That central vision is so vital to the things we do every day, like reading, watching TV, or even seeing our loved ones' faces. This is why it's super important to think about the ways we can protect our vision from macular degeneration. The first thing you can do to prevent the progression of macular degeneration is to take the AREDS2 vitamin and to eat lots of green leafy vegetables. The AREDS2 supplements include a few vitamins and antioxidants including vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, copper, lutein, and zeaxanthin. Research from the National Eye Institute has shown that Taking the AREDS2 supplement decreases the risk of progression from intermediate to advanced dry AMD by 25%. 
Green leafy vegetables such as kale and spinach are a great natural source of lutein and zeaxanthin, which are in the AREDS2 supplement. So it's useful to try to increase your consumption of these green leafy vegetables to help decrease the risk of AMD progression. The next tip to decrease your risk of developing macular degeneration is to exercise regularly and to maintain a healthy weight. This study from 2016 reviewed all the previous studies investigating the link between obesity and macular degeneration, and they found that patients with obesity had a 32% increased risk of developing severe AMD compared to those of normal body weight. The two leading theories on why obesity can increase risk of AMD have to do with the amount of fat or adipose tissue our bodies have. The first hypothesis is that increased fat tissue stimulates the release of pro-inflammatory messengers such as monocyte, chemoattractin protein 1, and tumor necrosis factor alpha, which have been shown to affect the inflammatory and immune systems in the retina and contribute to the retinal changes that we see in AMD. The next thought is that those important nutrients that we discussed earlier, lutein and zeaxanthin, are actually fat soluble, meaning that they can be stored inside fat tissue. As body weight increases, our bodies hold on to more fat tissue, and that precious lutein and zeaxanthin, which helps provide protection against AMD, instead of being stored in the retina, is going to be stored into the fat tissue throughout the body instead. So it might actually be more accurate to say that it's not body weight per se that increases the risk of developing AMD, but rather body fat percentage. So by maintaining a consistent exercise routine, such as 30 to 40 minutes of aerobic exercise, three to four times a week, you can help to maintain your overall health and vision too. The next thing you can do to help prevent vision loss from AMD is to know your family history. It's well known now that AMD has a large genetic component. One study from the UK found that patients who had a parent with AMD were 27.8 times more likely to have AMD, while those with a sibling who had AMD were 12 times more likely to have macular degeneration. That's a staggering increase in risk based on genetics alone, almost 28 times more likely just by having a parent with the disease. Now, I get it. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to change your family history of AMD and the risk associated with it. But you can make a difference if you know about your family history. If you have a relative with AMD, you should see an ophthalmologist to get examined for AMD. That's because multiple studies have shown that earlier detection and treatment for AMD improves visual outcomes for patients. So if you already know that you have an increased risk of AMD from a positive family history, then you would benefit greatly from earlier detection of the disease. And the last tip for preventing macular degeneration is an unhealthy habit you want to avoid, and that's smoking. Cigarette smoke has been shown in multiple studies to significantly increase the risk of developing AMD. Patients who smoke have at least double the risk of developing AMD compared to patients who don't smoke. Cigarette smoke has several toxic compounds that can cause damage to your blood vessels, your eyes, and your retinas. So if you smoke or if someone in your household smokes, now is the time to quit. If you found the information in this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future updates. And if you live in the Los Angeles, Orange County, or Inland Empire area and want to get your eyes checked, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call to make an appointment today. By the way, if you made it this far into the video, that probably means you're really interested in protecting your vision and health. You can learn about the best science-backed ways to maintain your vision and health by watching my video here. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Planet Hills Eye Care. See you next time.